This is Brutox. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, what we do and what we're all about, we're Brewbound. We're a trade publication covering the craft beer space daily with news. Uh, part of what we're all about is also uh, hosting events like this. So we travel the country. Uh, we'll be visiting nine cities, I believe, this year to host uh, similar events, uh, similar Brew Talks events. Um, and then we'll also host two full day conferences this year. So we're on the road a lot. We're out there talking to a lot of different entrepreneurs. Um, and really our goal is just to uh, connect with all you guys and get to know you and understand your businesses a little bit better and have really thoughtful and engaging uh, conversations um, and hopefully further everybody's professional development. Um, so with that being said, uh, I have to say a huge thank you to uh, the Widmer brothers and the entire CBA team. Big round of applause. Uh, they were the ones who were able to uh, get us access to this beautiful space here at Providence Park. Um, so thank you so much, Carmen, on behalf yeah, of the CBA team. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having us. Um, and uh, I know there's a lot of other CBA folks here, so thank you for coming out to support. Um, and thank you guys for showing up. Uh, we had 160 folks registered, so hopefully um, a lot of those people are here. I know we see probably about 100 or, or so folks here today, so thank you. Um, and of course, a big uh, you know, round of applause for our sponsors up here, without whom this wouldn't be possible. We travel with a lot of gear, um, a lot of camera equipment. We fly from Boston and San Diego and uh, bring a five-person team all around the country, and, and these guys have been sponsoring us uh, through the, all of our trips all year long. So um, thank you so much to OI, uh, G&D Chillers, JV Northwest, um, and I think we have a couple of more over there, Pub Keg, Vicinity Brew, General Distributors. Thank you guys. Um, without you guys, we, we couldn't do this, so thank you. To my left is the wonderful Carmen Olson from oh, Craft Brew Alliance. Uh, you used to head up the Red, the Red Hook division, now you're in charge, or one of the folks in charge of the Emerging Business division. Um, talk to me a little bit about this new unit that you guys have created within CBA. What are you guys doing with the Emerging Business division? Um, so it's funny because I just sent uh, Chris a, a text today because had you guys used TimeHop ever, the app that shows like what you were doing last year and the year before and the year before that? Well, um, three years ago I, I met Chris because he came to Red Hook Fest and, and my, my tweet was, at Brewbound, great meeting you today, um, thanks for coming out to Red Hook Fest. And it's, it's so interesting because looking now, three years ago, craft beer looked entirely different than it looks today, 2015. So then there was 2,500 breweries, which is still you know, a lot of breweries. Yep. And now there are 3,500 plus, there's a lot more. And um, even more important than that is that only about 200 of those breweries are producing more than 10,000 barrels at a time. So all, um, the rest of the guys are looking for ways to grow and to stay competitive, um, trying to figure out what their next step is. And so that's sort of where um, CBA's Emerging Business Division was born. That and a response to consumers' um, desire to be more connected to their community and, and to be more local. So um, from that, uh, Emerging Business was spawned and CBA has developed a, a business model around strategic partnerships like the one that we formed with Appalachian Mountain Brewery. Um, to, to make sure that we can stay locally relevant in, in markets where we want to be, um, where we want to have a presence. Right. What's been sort of the biggest learning so far? I mean, I know it's, you know, things are still very new, but yeah. um, clearly there's been some discovery. You guys have had to go out, talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs. I mean, what are they struggling with? And what have you guys learned about just kind of the space right now and, and how quickly it's evolved? Um, so it is evolving really quickly. I would say that the biggest struggles are sort of the obvious ones that um, breweries want to get more beer to more people. So distribution is a big one. There's a lot of folks out there who are self-distributing right now, evaluating whether or not they want to look at um, distribution agreements with uh, different wholesalers. And then on the other side of it, uh, brewing capacity. So you know they're they're getting as much beer out there to as many people as they can, and they're sort of hitting this this obstacle and stopping point. So I'm um, trying to figure out how how they get more beer to more people. And right now, there are lots of different options for them to evaluate, and we're hearing lots of news about the different way, the different options that are available. Um, some of those breweries have enough money that they have a ca they are um, using capex to go invest in in their own locations. Uh, there are some 
like New Belgium, for example, who are doing employee stock ownership programs, so allowing the employees to invest back in the company. Um, private equity is a hot topic right now. Uh, minority or, or majority investments in breweries so that they have access to, to more funds. And, and then full ownership, like we, um, like AB just did with Ten Barrel and Elysian. Um, and then the last one is strategic partnerships, and that's really the model that CBA is using to approach new growth and, and new business. Um, and for us, we, we think that's really beneficial because it allows the, the brewery to retain full brand ownership and independence, um, but also get access to um, increased capacity at our breweries. We have five breweries now. Um, as well as um, an opportunity to sell and market and distribute their beers through our, our very sophisticated system. Right. Um, so, I guess, for, how are you guys going about finding uh, some of the folks that, you know, would be looking for these types of options that are out there? Are they calling you? Are you reaching out to them? Combination of both? I mean, how, how are you finding people that are kind of waving their hands in the air saying, hey, like, right. I need some help? A little bit of both. Um, you know, I would say with 3,500 breweries out there, and, and most of them being really small breweries looking for ways to grow, it's not that hard. Like, folks are, for, folks are reaching out to us and, and contacting us, um, wondering what a partnership might look like with CBA. Um, but additionally, you know, we're being really strategic, too, about the kind of partners that we want to work with. And uh, a big component of that is the geography that they're located in. So. Um, recently, in the last year or so, we've taken a home market approach to our um, CBA-owned brands. So Red Hook and Kona and Woodmer, for example, are really investing in their home markets of Seattle and Portland and Hawaii. And that's been working for us in a, in a really big way. We, um, Red Hook is up 5% in Washington, Woodmer 7% in, in Portland, and Kona is up 22% in Hawaii. So that model is working and what we're trying to do is replicate that and build more home markets in geographies where we see some potential for growth. So those are geographies where um, the craft beer index is high and people are consuming a lot of craft beer, so a lot of mass, um, but also just some excitement and cool things happening. I mean, North Carolina is a great, a great example of that. Right, and, that, and that's why you have a partnership with Appalachian Mountain then? Correct. So geography was a big part there, or yeah, I mean, how did that relationship sort of develop over time? Well, c uh, credit to you and your <laughs> team, Chris. Um, so that develop that was um, that was actually part of where the emerging business division was sort of born. So we realized an opportunity after that relationship. Uh, we were introduced to Appalachian Mountain Brewery from the Startup Brewery Challenge, which is um, something that happens twice a year with Brewbound sessions. And uh, they were part of the first Startup Brewery Challenge where, and were selected a, as the winner. Um, and that sort of started all of this for us. What's interesting is how it's evolved and developed from, from since then. So one year ago, we announced a strategic partnership with Appalachian Mountain Brewery. And, um, and in April, we started selling and marketing and distributing their beers. At the, later this year, we're going to start brewing. Uh, they're going to start brewing their beer in our Portsmouth, New Hampshire facility, so that they can get more beer to to their North Carolina beer drinkers. So, um, you know, you've obviously learned something just from them alone, just from working with them yeah, alone. Absolutely. What's been the biggest learning there, and you know, what can another sort of entrepreneur, or another small business owner take away? You know, if, if you had to pass along a lesson, just seeing it firsthand with Appalachian Mountain, what's one of the things that they're struggling with the most? Um, you know, one of the things, so there's a couple of different things. Um, there's lots of learning in something like this. There's learning about the, the partnership itself and how those work. This is the first one for us. So um, we're sort of building a template and a model for how we want to do these in the future. Um, and then there's also learning for what it is that they're trying to figure out. So going from self-distribution to working with a wholesaler comes with a whole new set of challenges. Um, I know that there's some folks from the wholesaler world here tonight. And, um, you know, when, you're, when you have your own team on the ground and you're distributing your own beers, you have a lot of passion behind it and people who are, like, pouring their heart, heart and soul to, into it. And on the wholesaler side, that is happening too. Um, it's just that you're, you're competing for share of mind with a lot of other breweries who share just as much passion. So um, I think that has been a surprise for Appalachian Mountain is trying to convince like these wholesalers that we are, like this is the brand that you guys need to focus on. 
So not something that, that they knew about before and something that right. we're working through them with. So learning how to sort of navigate that conversation with the wholesaler. Yeah, and just like that's, that's something that's not going to go away, right? You're going to be competing for share of mind with the wholesaler and with the retailer and with the consumer for as long as your brand exists. Right. So, um, so a new way for them to experience that. And then um, for both of us too, going into this partnership, something that we're really um, very sincere about and earnest about is that we want it truly to be a partnership. So we're not looking, um, you know, we don't want to work with a partner who just wants to hand over the keys. We want to work with a partner who genuinely wants to build a model that is mutually beneficial for us. Um, and that takes time, like there's a learning curve in that. We have to really understand what their needs are and how those, how those needs intersect. Um, I sort of use this really weird uh, dating analogy to talk about how this <laughs> relationship has evolved. And with Appalachian Mountain, I, um, I kind of think of our introduction to them as um, like the equivalent of a Tinder. And, and like we swiped right and decided that, okay, yeah, these are, these are somebody who we have mutual interest with and, <laughs> and it's a match. And, and then they swiped forward, right as well. And I they hope, did. Yeah. yeah. So like, okay, maybe there's something here. And then we started dating, right? And we, and we showed more commitment to each other. And so um, we found some intersections where they needed to have increased uh, brewing capacity and they needed to have an ability to get their beer to more North Carolina beer drinkers. We, we, we had a match for that. So um, that's evolved and it'll probably continue to evolve, you know, and I can't say specifically how because we're in it right now and we're, we we're figuring it yeah. out, yeah. Right. So when you're looking at uh, potential new candidates, uh, you know, to, to be a part of this emerging business division mm -hmm. that you guys have created, what, what kind of considerations um, are you guys looking at? I mean, are you looking at the brand itself? Are you looking at the quality of their beer? Um, you know, are you looking at the, the production capabilities? I mean, what, what goes into the assessment process for you guys to sort of say yes to, to any company? Yeah. Um, so there are a few different things. There's a couple of different ways that we look at it. First of all, good beer is just a ticket to the show. Like they need to have good beer and they need to have a solid following and momentum behind their brand. Outside of that, we sort of distill it into three different um, components. So we're looking for person, place, and thing. Um, person is the people that we're working with, which is a really important component for us. Um, like I mentioned before, we're, we're not interested in just like, hand, like having somebody hand over the keys. We genuinely want this to be a par partnership where we understand the needs of the, of the partner and see how those, how those intersect and overlap. Um, we also need them to have a face and to be active and, and committed to um, staying engaged in their brewery. For place, it's some of the other things that I mentioned. Like we're looking for geographies where craft beer is growing and there's a substantial mass there. We're also looking at breweries that have a sense of place. So um, that really contributes to, to having a story and a place where um, their story is told. Kona, for example, is an, um, one of the breweries that we first formed a strategic partnership with. And um, they have an amazing sense of place, right? It's Hawaii and it's a destination. And we, their story is about liquid aloha. And um, so we're looking for similar stories like that and have found that in Appalachian Mountain. Boone is a phenomenally, phenomenally beautiful city. And, um, and North Carolina is a growing beer town. So that really matters, um, which is the third thing, um, which is just thing. Like, do they have that thing? Is, uh, do they have momentum behind their brand? Are people excited about them and talking about them? And do they have a story that distinguishes them from the rest of craft? All right. Do you think enough people have those things or those stories right now? Or is that something that's lacking from a, from a lot of businesses out there? No, I think uh, the difference is that a lot of, a lot of the breweries have, have that story, um, but it's hyper-local. Like, it, it all matters in a very um, small area, which is why we're working with these really small breweries. I mean, Appalachian Mountain, for example, when we started working with their, in 2014, they did 800 barrels. And um, we started the distribution agreement with them, started distributing their beer in April. And in a quarter, we've um, distributed 1,000 barrels for them. So in one quarter of the time that it took to, for them to do that before. And it's all, it's in, but that's for um, 
for wholesalers in North Carolina. So it's not as though we're taking a brand and sort of growing it really rapidly and, and cranking volume out of it. Right. We're really interested in um, taking those brands and growing, um, going deep with them and uh, making sure that we have an opportunity to have locally relevant brands in, in the markets where we want to have a presence. Right. I mean, you really only have one chance of getting it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we're being very intentional about that um, expansion. So uh, a lot of stuff happening out there right now. Um, you know, we wrote about it today. We woke up this morning yeah. and, you know, here's Reuters out there saying that there's more than a dozen breweries for sale. I mean, probably not really a shock to anyone that there's more than a dozen craft breweries out there right now, considering what their options are. Yeah. Um, I think the piece itself was, was, was probably um, taken out of context and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe blown out of proportion a bit. I don't think that all these breweries are necessarily have like a for sale sign on them. Um, I think, you know, probably more like what you guys are doing, they're looking for ways to continue growing and, and figuring out what that next step is. Um, but that sort of changes the landscape when money mm -hmm. starts coming in and all these breweries start um, bringing really experienced uh, financial types into the business to take a totally different look at it than a brewer would. Um, so as you guys sort of peer out into the future, how do you see the landscape starting to change and where does that emerging business unit fit into all that change? Yeah. Um. So I would say that ultimately our goal, you know, 18 months from now, I, I would hope that we have a stable of really healthy, locally relevant brands um, that, that matter in, in their own geographies. Um, beyond that, I, th I would like to see that, you know, maybe some of those brands, it makes sense for us to expand um, the distribution footprints of, uh, a little bit. Um, but really, we're looking for locally relevant brands. Like, after that, I, I don't know who can say. I, I don't know what five years from now looks like. Um, what I would say about what is happening with the rest of the market is that we're able to, so looking at private equity, for example. So that's an easy way to get access to capital and cash. Um, and it's, it's a good, I think that it's a good way for some breweries to, to look at it. Um, for us, I think what differentiates our partnership model is that um, we give them access to um, a distribution network in the AB wholesaler network. We give them access to brewing capacity that they wouldn't have otherwise had. And we have craft expertise. So we've been doing this for more than 30 years. And I can guarantee you that almost any ob obstacle that you run into, like, we've tripped over it. So uh, we are not too proud to admit that we've made mistakes. And we also know how to navigate around some of that stuff. So that is really, like, that itself is something that private equity and lots of these other different partnership or um, growth models can't offer. Right. They bring pretty much just capital mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe business acumen from another industry, yeah. which, you know, certainly there's, uh, you know, you can apply some of those principles to, to beer, but, um, you know, not the direct experience that you guys have. Um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, sort of final question here for you. I know we only got a limited amount of time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys are talking to a lot of folks, certainly, you know, people are calling you, you're having a lot of different conversations. Um, what are the questions that they're asking you? Like, I, I, I'm always like really curious to know what entrepreneurs are asking because we ask a lot of questions and, um, you know, I, I'm sure that entrepreneurs have way different questions than the kinds of questions I ask. So yeah. what are some of the questions that you've kind of fielded from some of these brewers that, that you're having conversations with right now? So I would say the, um, the biggest things, like the big picture questions are how do, I get, how do I get more beer to more people? Like that's the big thing that is on everyone's mind. Um, outside of that, there's, a lot, there's so much shit involved in selling beer and brewing <laughs> beer. I mean, that, so it's really simple questions. Like for example, with Appalachian Mountain, um, you know, we're working with them to integrate all of our point of sale into our POS website right now. So now wholesalers are going to be able to go on and order POS directly from the website instead of having to have more staff at, the, at like figuring out how to get t-shirts out to some, some guy down the street. Um, so streamlining, streamlining some of those things um, and just really simple sort of tactical things are, um, are an area where we offer some help. So they're, they're asking like very nuanced sort of questions like... Yeah, I mean, it's all <laughs> brand new, you know, so... How do I forecast for my next year's uh, hop supply? I mean, just like 
r really sort of down nitty gritty stuff inside the brew house. That's yeah. that's kind of what they're focused on. You think? Yeah. Uh, well, no, I don't think that they're necessarily focused on that. I would say that they're focused on uh, making sure that they get their beer to to North Carolina. Like that's what they want to do. They want to brew really good beer and they want to get it to to the beer drinkers. Um, but there's a lot involved in that. So that's right. where all of the nitty gritty stuff comes so in. So getting from sort of point A to point C, you know, figuring out yeah, what point B is. Yeah, it's complicated. It's very complex. Right. Interesting. Uh, well, I mean, it's going to be, you know, really interesting to see how things continue to take shape, not only just, you know, in the broader spectrum of craft beer, but kind of what you guys are doing uh, with your emerging business division. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure there'll be, you know, some kind of announcements at some point uh, in, the, so. in the next 18 months, or uh, maybe I won't be talking to you. Yeah. Um, so good <laughs> yeah. luck with that. Yeah, really. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, Carmen, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Big round of applause for Carmen. Thanks.